How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank. Welcome back to my channel and to the second part of the custom hybrid Radeon RX 480 review. In this video, I'll be showing how I made a card and how you can build a little monster for yourselves. You don't necessarily need an AIO to get to 1450 plus megahertz on this card. I initially wanted to go with an RT cooling accelerator Mono Plus as other people have used it and reported great results. This is very cheap and the whole package will end up costing less than the custom AIP cards. The luck everyone had with this card is that for a reference model it is very solidly built. AMD didn't cut corners with this thing but all of this would not be possible without non-lock BIOS and that is what their Bauer made for us. Everything starts with flashing your card. It lets you go beyond 1.15 volts to a max of 1.4 volts and it lets you up the TDP to plus 50%. 6 pin power connectors can still deliver up to 150 watts like 8 pin since they are only missing 2 ground wires. Alongside a minimum of 75 watts from the PCIe port, you can go up to 225 watts with this BIOS. At minimum, I say that because modern motherboards that are built well can easily go beyond the spec 75 watts, maybe even double it. So depending on your motherboard, you can potentially reach even 150 watts for the PCIe for a theoretical maximum of 300 watts. First step is to download the unlock BIOS and flash it, which is as simple as turning your PC on, download it, run the appropriate file and you are flashed and unchained. The second step is changing the cooling on this card and no matter what you opt for you will go through this next step which is taking the card apart. Turn the card over and start removing all screws, of course you will be removing the warranty void if removed sticker so be warned. In total there are around 15 screws you have to remove, having done this there are 2 more tiny screws on the mounting bracket, remove this and you are good to go. Gently pry off the stock blower and remove the fan connector, the Polaris GPU is exposed in all of its glory. Taking a look at the PCB you can see that there are 6 phases for the GPU which are spec to 40 amps each. So there is a lot of headroom here fortunately, the VRMs themselves are rated to plus 125 Celsius safe operating temperature. Theoretically the car doesn't reach these temperatures if you have at least a side case fan, but leaving them without heat sinks is not something I'm comfortable with. Sadly for the ID cooling Frostflow 240G AIO it is impossible to reverse the orientation of the metal bracket so that its built-in fan cools the VRMs directly. Directly. Therefore its built-in cooler is semi-redundant, I say semi only because it does cool the adjacent memory modules. Luckily I have a 250mm fan on the side of the case that blows in heaps of air over the VRMs. Clean the die with isopropyl alcohol or what have you, you can use a quality thermal paste but I opted for cool laboratory liquid ultra gallium based a pain in the ass since it is electrically conductive so you have to be extremely careful to not leak it on the PCB. Also, I feel unsafe to not protect the surface mounted components next to the die, so as always, I use clear nail varnish in a few coats to protect these parts. I apply the CLU on the die with the included brush and in small quantities, don't go overboard with this. You also have to do the same for the copper plate on the cooler, I spread the sufficient amount on it as well and this is how it looked before pairing things together. I am a big fan of CLU, I think it works wonders, that is why I went to the trouble of using it even if it's such a pain in the ass. We also need to cool the memory chips and the VRMs, so I use the included aluminium, yes sadly aluminium heat sinks. I fixed the ones on the memory modules with thermal pads and initially I also fixed the VRM ones with thermal pads as well. It was not such a good idea as they were prone to falling off due to weight, so I used silicone thermal resistant adhesive and secured the heat sinks to all VRM modules. I will not go into details on mounting this as you probably won't use the exact same cooler but it was easy to set up, it had a back plate which fixes the AIO with thumb screws and secures everything in place. So this is the completely assembled hybrid GPU, it looks awesome in my opinion and the colors match the build just perfectly. The included high static pressure fans do the job fine but they are a little bit noisy. I'd guesstimate they are around as noisy as the reference card is with the cooler set at 50%. I will either switch these out in the future or get a fan controller for them as I don't need them running at high speed. Which leads us nicely into temperatures. Unlocked 1266MHz with a reference blower, I had to use 75% fan speed, the noise was huge and temperatures were around 75 to 80 degrees Celsius during load. With 1470MHz overclock I am never above 47 Celsius in a 25C ambient. Just wow! Also the max that this card can handle is 1570MHz at 1.327V and at that level it is always below 50 Celsius. 
VRM's get hot really fast at this clock but I am not bothered since I don't plan on running 1.327 volts 24-7 through the chip unless the general consensus is that it is safe at low temperatures. For overclocking I use Asus GPU Tweak 2 which is awesome for this card, you can change everything, I also settled on plus 180MHz OC on the memory, it is noticeable at 1470MHz that the GPU runs, it needs the extra bandwidth. Discussing the overclock potential for the RX 480 compared to its direct competitor, the GTX 1060, let's take a look here and see which is the better overclocker. The spec Founders Edition boost clock is 1709 MHz, but I was able to get to 2107 MHz with plus 90 millivolts on my Gigabyte G1 Gaming. Uh, the maximum for this card was actually 2122 MHz, but with a maxed out voltage slider and temperatures went up really fast and I had to change the fan to manual and set it to 80 plus in order to keep the card cool. Putting things into perspective, I was able to OC the 1060 by 398 MHz from Nvidia's boost clock. As for the RX 480, I was able to OC it by 204 MHz from its boost clock. That is a 23.2% OC for the GTX 1060 and a 16.2 for the RX 480. There is a difference here, but the RX 480 is far from the overclocker's nightmare that people make it out to be. I think just the opposite, the process itself is much more hands-on and challenging, but in a good way. The RX 480 benefits just as much, if not more, from the overclock. Like I said, it is far away from the non-scaling monster that people think it to be. Things are very relative and I say this because no Founders Edition 1060 will run at just 1709 MHz, a boost clock but rather 1850 plus as an average. It all depends on how Nvidia actually declares its boost clock cause if they say it's something along the lines of 1600 MHz, the OC potential would be even higher but an artificial one since the card was never meant to run with such low boost clocks in the first place. And I don't say this to Nvidia's disadvantage, this is marketing in my opinion and AMD sadly lacks their skills. Meanwhile, the RX 480 doesn't reach and lock its boost clock of 1266MHz out of the box. As a 10 game average, it is around 1160MHz, so if I were to recalculate OC percentages in real life, the RX 480 would come out as a better overclocker than the 1060, as I was able to overclock and lock it at that new 1470MHz frequency by a whopping 26.7% at 1470 and a staggering 30.7% for 1517MHz. Wow, color me impressed, but how about that? It all depends on perspective. 4 giggles, here's The Witcher 3 running at 1500 MHz on the RX 480. As an observation here, I'm running into memory bandwidth limitation and actually see better FPS by upping the memory to at least 8250 plus MHz. This is good core scaling with frequency. I'm leaving in the dust all those 256 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Is this a good card? Absolutely, I just love it and I'm saying this as a brand neutral guy which has owned in equal numbers ATI, AMD and Nvidia cards throughout my 17 years of PC building. I always enjoyed having the bang for the buck card of the moment, especially if it's a good overclocker. It's just that nice feeling you have when you significantly go above factory clocks and you see performance skyrocket. And remember, I wanna see your comments and questions down below. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover about this Radeon RX 480 Red Mod, please let me know and I'll do the best I can to cover it. Thank you for supporting this channel's growth by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.